Okay, so Tyler from Capra, how are you, sir, and where are you? So good. I'm in Lafayette, Louisiana. Louisiana. I don't know much about Louisiana, I have to say. What, what can you tell me about Louisiana and especially like the music scene down there? Uh, the music scene's great. We got a very eclectic scene, uh, a lot of different styles and genres, and it gets crazy at shows out here. Other than that, we've got really good food. <laughs> that counts for a lot. Good music and good food. What That's more do you it. need? What more do you need? Nothing. So you guys just put out your first album. I guess this has been a long time in the making and probably hasn't been helped by recent uh, pandemics that we've been having that you may have heard of. From this album, what's the first kind of music that actually you started writing back in the day that made it onto the album? Uh, so the first few songs that, well, a few of the songs made it onto the album, which is uh, Medusa and Samurai Carey. Those were two of the first songs that we ever wrote as a band. And uh, they're just such powerful songs that we decided to keep them and we discarded a lot. But those were two that we really wanted to be on the album. Uh, other than that, I think a few of our older ones are like Red Guillotine. And then Locust Preacher, we wrote, that was the first song we wrote with Crow as our vocalist. Are, are any of the, al- the tracks on the album from before she joined the band? Yes. Uh, Medusa, Samurai Carry, Red Guillotine. And I think that might be it. I think that might be all of them that, are, that were pre-Crow. Okay, because I believe like Crow is the main lyri- lyricist now, correct? Correct. Yes. So who was the lyricist before she joined? And Uh, we had a guy named Lee. He was the vocalist before Crow and he wrote all the lyrics and uh, he did have different lyrics for those songs, but we didn't want to use those. Uh, Crow wanted to come in. She just, she didn't feel comfortable with singing someone else's lyrics. Yeah. Right. And she writes such powerful lyrics that we were like, all right, just completely redo these songs. And uh, she crushed them. She made them better. I guess, especially with the kind of music that you're making, you, you need to feel it. And if you're singing somebody else's lyrics, maybe you don't quite as connect and you don't have that same feeling. So, yeah, yeah. Everything that she sings, it comes from her heart. It comes from her experiences. So to sing someone else's experience is just not our style. It's not the way it would, you know, I wouldn't play another guitar player's parts. Yeah, I, it's just how I work. So when you started the band back in, was it 2015? Correct. What was your kind of vision for what you wanted to create? Did you have a, a clear thing in mind as far as the sound and everything concerned with the band? So Jeremy and I had come from a doom band right before. We were playing really sludgy, slow, heavy, heavy doom metal. And what I knew coming into this band was that I wanted it to be fast. I was really bored with playing slow music. And I just wanted it to be a quick paced, in your face, aggressive, furious band. And uh, I think it took us a little while. It took us about a year or two to really find our sound. Uh, At the beginning stages, we sounded almost like at the drive-in. It was kind of, it was the same as we are now, but it it had a little bit more of this like indie ambient vibe to it. I I don't know how to really describe it. It was, it was nuts. And then it all it all happened so quickly where I actually started out on bass playing and Jeremy, our drummer, was the guitar player. And whenever we made that switch uh, from me to guitar and him to drums, it, it kind of all fell into place and we were really able to pick up the pace with the music. Excellent. And how did you find Crow? What was the, the, the meeting of minds there? How did that happen? Uh, Crow had been in our music scene for a long time. Uh, She used to play in a band called 666. And we had seen their shows. I'd seen her do vocals maybe one time. Uh, She was actually the bass player for that band, but she did backup vocals every now and then. And once we parted ways with our last vocalist, I knew I wanted a female. Uh, I had been listening to a lot of Oathbreaker and Gouge Away and like old school Walls of Jericho. And I just felt women in the hardcore scene weren't given that uh, they weren't given enough of a chance. So I wanted a female to front us and uh, I made a post on Facebook and somebody tagged her and I was like, Oh yeah, I remember her crushing it on vocals and we made her try out and she agreed and like killed it ever since. 
I think we made her try out four or five times before we actually told her she was in the band, but we knew <laughs> immediately. Her sound is so intense that it matches the sound of the band so well. And what you were talking about, you know, the style that you were going for, I think you pretty much nailed that. It's it's yeah. full on relentless. There's not a lot of drops in the music. Um, I can imagine, right. imagine it being pretty intense in a live situation. Have you written any new music or much new music since the stuff that's on this album? Oh, tons. Yeah, I think we're about seven songs into the next album. Oh, wow. Um, we just, I mean, I don't stop writing. It's its kind of my addiction. I just play guitar and uh, and I, I keep writing. I keep stressing myself out. Oh, I need another song. I need another song. And uh, it just, it helps me. You know, it's kind of my... It's one of my personal therapies to write and play guitar. So has this new music taken any different turns or is it still like straight, powerful, in your face? Oh, it's straight up in your face. It's not really, uh, it's not much different. There's, there's a few different aspects to it that I try to lean in. I, I want to give more of a shine to the vocals, I think, on the next album. So I'm trying to like dial down back how chaotic I get in certain songs uh, which is a little bit tricky but I, I think there's definitely it's definitely going to be an evolution of the band on the next album. Even if you have a very fixed sound that you want to become known for I think it's it's always important for, for an artist to feel like they're they're moving forward in some way right? Absolutely yeah we we have a few announcements coming up that uh that I think will change the way the next album is written. So just be on the lookout for that because that's going to be very cool. Okay. When's the last time you actually played live in front of an audience? You did a live stream uh, early on in the year, right? Yeah, we did Metal Injection Slay at Home yeah. live stream. Uh, that was fun. Uh, but the last time we've actually played in front of an audience, uh, it was a show with Child Bite and Today is the Day. And that was March 10th of 2020. So just before things so, shut down. Right, right before things shut down. Yeah. I actually got sick like a week later and uh, turns out it was COVID. I don't know. I, you were one of the first, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Wow. I was one of the first to get it. And uh, yeah, it was rough. Yeah. Well, it's nice to kind of get it out of the way while the the rest of the world seems to be falling into right uh, chaos, right that's right? what i was thinking it's been about a year and a half since we've played a show and we actually just booked one uh which is you know it's cool seeing that light at the end of the tunnel yeah it's really interesting because like this week in particular in montreal there's been a few show announcements and some big announcements like megadeth lamb of god has been oh, cool. confirmed for later in the year i think october so not that far away. And that's obviously going to be a big kind of arena show with Trivium as well and Inflames. It's a big lineup. Uh, so there is light at the end of the tunnel. You know, we're always just, you know, just keeping our fingers crossed that these things actually happen. Right. This, this that's time. kind of what we're doing. Yeah. So Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're booking a tour for uh, October and November and just placing holds on dates and like fingers crossed, hoping it happens. Well, I think once things start opening up, there seems to be such a buzz about you guys that I'm sensing, like, hopefully it's going to be not very long before you go further afield and hopefully make it up here to Montreal. The kind of sound that you've got yeah. is definitely going to going to go down well in the Montreal scene for sure. So, yeah, we would love to come there. When you think about playing live, what what makes for the perfect Capra show? What What happens where when you come off stage you're just like everything about that was just perfect uh stage energy uh crowd energy uh we practice relentlessly so i have no fear of you know messing up or anything like that the perfect show i just think would be you know that great crowd that just moves and and is is with you the entire time do you guys get out into the crowd or you you remain on stage or i do yeah okay. i definitely do crow does sometimes as well if it's not you know a bunch of big burly men you know she'll she'll be out there yelling but i'm the one usually running around uh going 
Absolutely, madman. If you could only tour with one band for the next like duration until you release the next album or something like that, you could you could pick one band that you were going to open for. Is there a band that comes to mind? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> one band to tour with. Maybe maybe a band um, where, where you love the band, but also you think their fans would appreciate what you do. I got to say every time I die, I got to say that, that, you know, that's been a band that like that really changed the way that I view hardcore and the way that I approach my guitar writing. So I'd love to tour with every time I die. Well, you have an every time I die poster right behind you there. I can see. I definitely do. <laughs> I'm a big fan as well. And they always bring the energy to their shows. They're, they're right. insane live. They have that, they have that balance insane live. between intensity, but also fun. They show, you always have fun at their shows, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think I've seen them about 10 times now and it's just a, it's a crazy experience every single time. It's a new experience every time. And that's what you want. And that's what they want. That's right. Too. So yeah. at this point in time, you know, we've mentioned that you're starting to maybe look at, at dates, but everything's still a little bit uncertain. Have you, what do you think is going to be next for Capra, you know, at the moment? You know, we just took, we just got into May 2021. So as far as you're concerned, what's your plan for the rest of the year now? Uh, so the plan is to keep writing. That's first and foremost. Um, work on this tour. And hopefully that plays out. Uh, I think we have another music video in the works. We're going to do that. And then we're also discussing uh, an Australian New Zealand tour. Nice. So that'll be for next year. Uh, but hopefully that pans out. You want to book that for the summer in Australia when it's cold where you are, right? Cold where we are. Never. Oh, no. Oh, no, of course. No, I guess I, I, uh, yeah. you're down south. So, yeah, we don't have we don't have winter. Well, uh, if you ever come to Montreal in the winter, then um, be prepared. That's all I can say. Oh, I know. I, I can already imagine. I went to uh, Europe. I did a tour with another band that I was playing with. We did two and a half months and we went into Switzerland. I think it was like negative 19 degrees and I almost died. I was <laughs> real close. Uh, I just want to touch on the graphic side of what you do. Like it's you, I love the album cover. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really like strong image. You know, it's got, it's got a little bit of that Jacob Bannon kind of feel going to it. it. How important is the visual side um, for you guys? Like how do you, how do you incorporate it with the music? Uh, it's, it's super important. We don't go for anything too evil i would say i think a lot of bands overdo that um we just want it we're we're all big fans of artwork and uh you know we want it to be obscure and it, it has to tie in with the music but uh yeah it's funny that you point that out we definitely went for uh kind of like a pay homage to jane doe the converge album and uh it's definitely heavily jacob band and influenced yeah, I, I love his artwork. I have some, like, I, was, I have a book over there that's signed by him with loads of his artwork in and stuff like that. And I'm a big fan of the band too, obviously. Just quickly, obviously your music is like very intense. What do you listen to when you're at home and you want to just kind of chill out? Oh, actually, this is funny because it's a Canadian band called Broken Social Scene. Uh, yeah. They're like my... They're like my go-to chill music. So I like Broken Social Scene. I like Beach House. I like Godspeed You. These are, I think two of the three are Canadian bands. Rush. Yeah. That's Rush. Just, let's just throw them all out there. Classic. Yeah. Yeah, well, from Montreal, we have uh, Godspeed, You Black Emperor, and bands like Arcade Fire from here. On the heavier side, we have bands like uh, Cryptopsy and Despised Icon um, and there's a there's a really good scene in Montreal for sure, and I hope definitely that you guys are going to be um, witnessing that for yourself as soon as we can. You know, I hope so. Yeah, I actually saw um, a Godspeed You side project, uh, Silver Mount Zion, back in mm -hmm. like 2013. Those guys are just so cool. Obviously, I'm from the UK. Uh, I've been in Montreal since 2014, and right. I was just really relieved that when I moved here, that the, the music scene 
was as good as I was used to. You know, we kind of spoil in the UK with such a good music scene, but here it is, it is really, really a great place. So hopefully we'll see you in Montreal. But in the meantime, thanks very much for hanging out with Montreal Rocks and um, yeah. good, luck, good luck with the future. Send our best to the band. We love the album and uh, we look forward to seeing it in a room with a sweaty crowd very soon. Thank you so much. We look forward to that as well. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. You as well. 